Hey, how's it going? Before this video starts, I'm going to explain what an iceberg is for those who are unfamiliar with this type of videos. A iceberg is a tier list that begins with the most common trivia and theories at the top to the least common at the bottom. Now that I got that out the way, let's roll the intro. Oh Yeah Cartoons is an animated television series that ran on Nickelodeon from 1998 to 2001. The series showed a variety of 7 minute cartoon shorts. Some of the cartoon shorts even became full television series for Nick, one of which was Fairly Odd Parents. Oh Yeah Cartoon! Chloe and Sparky are characters that appeared in later seasons of Fairly Odd Parents. Sparky appeared in Season 9, Episode 1 titled, Fairly Odd Pets. <laughs> After being present for most of the ninth season, Sparky did not return for season 10 because the Nickelodeon executives decided to remove him from the show due to the negative feedback from the audience. It still is unknown how he disappeared from the show, but I have a few guesses. In season 10, the character Chloe Carmichael first appeared in the episode, The Big Fairy Share Scare. The character is hated by fans for coming off as extremely annoying and being a perfect overachiever. Cosmo is one of the main characters in the series. Cosmo has green hair, green eyes, and wears a white long t-shirt, black tie, and black pants. In the original shorts, Cosmo had a more deep, used car salesman-like voice. Darren Norris, Cosmo's voice actor, described Cosmo's early voice as a bad impression of comedian Phil Hartman. Over the course of the series, Cosmo's voice became more high-pitched to fit his goofy personality in the series. Doug Dimbadon, owner Dimsdale Dimbadon. Doug Dimbadon is a major business owner in Dimsdale. Doug Dimbadon wears a white Texas business suit with a 10 gallon hat. In some episodes, the top of his hat is really, really tall. You're throwing us in jail? Oh, don't think of it as jail. Think of it as a rustic daycare center with big iron bars. Adios, I got me some childhood memories to destroy, like yours. <laughs> Not only does Doug Demodome owns the Demsdale Demodome, he also owns the Demodelphia Cable Company, the basketball team, the Demsdale Ball Halls, Demsdale Flats after buying the deed from Timmy's dad. You've given me the town that represents everything that was good and wonderful about my childhood. I'll give you eight bucks for it. Sold! Style up, boys! This town's going down! Demodon Acres, Chicken Dippin' Demodon, and even the television studio, Croc Talk Set, hosted by Mr. Crocker. Dinklebar is one of the side characters in the series and the next door neighbor of the Turner family, who Timmy's dad absolutely hates, which is a running gag in the series. Hey, looking good, Turner! Dinkleberg! <laughs> Keep working, Dinkleberg! And don't forget to polish my statue! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Turner and Dinkleberg have been one-sided rivals since childhood. Mrs. Turner even dated Dinkleberg. When Dinkleberg became rich after inventing parachute pants, he quickly dumped Mrs. Turner and she became Timmy's dad's sloppy seconds. Look at those pockets! Who knows what could be in them? I'm in! And I'm rich! And we're through. <laughs> Not to take advantage of you on the rebound, but may I mop up your tears? <laughs> Tara Strong is a Canadian voice actor, known for voicing many characters throughout her career, like Ben Tennyson from Ben 10, Raven from Teen Titans, Truffles from Chowder, and many more characters. Tara Strong took over the voice of Tammy Turner after Mary Kay Bertman's passing. In early episodes of the series, Wanda's skin color was more of a light pink tone. Her skin tone would change in later seasons. Butch Hartman is the creator of Fairly Odd Parents. Butch also created Danny Phantom, Tough Puppy, and Bunsen is a Beast. Hartman worked on other shows like Johnny Bravo and Dexter's Laboratory alongside Seth MacFarlane, the creator of Family Guy.
Fairly Odd Baby is the first episode of season 6. Cosmo and Wanda wanted to have a baby, but the Supreme Fairy Council forbid fairies from having any children. Due to the fact that Cosmo, who was the last baby to be born, caused a lot of destruction to Fairy World when he was an infant. <laughs> Gucci Gucci Goo! You're so cute! <laughs> Since there wasn't any rules against it, Timmy wishes that Cosmo and Wanda would have a baby, hoping they would become happier. But due to the awkward way that fairy pregnancy works, Cosmo was the one who became pregnant and Poof would eventually be born. Cosmo is based as a compilation of Cosmo's funniest moments. Well, we know what I think! Who cares what you think? You're a girl now! <laughs> Have you gained weight? A lot of weight. I don't want to be a crab all the time! That's never stopped you before! It's not their job to make your life fun! the opposite like wives <laughs> and that he should consider the consequences blah 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 because i'm the opposite of fun i so love them can you tell us to unwish the wish and that if we don't it'll be really bad because you're so smart and i'm so dumb and blah 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 <laughs> ah, death, break free suffocating ah, i need my space is this what it's like for timmy Ooh, I Send him back to his home planet to be killed? Or worse, married! I can't let him get wasted like that! Or get married! We've come for the creature you call Mom! No! You have a perfect civilization! Why would you want to add a woman to it? The Nega Chen is the Crimson Chen's evil twin from a parallel universe. He's the parody of an evil counterpart that a superhero usually has, like Bizarro or the Reverse Flash. The Nega Chen's name has become an internet meme because it sounds like, um, well, I think it's best if I just show you. The Niggers? Niggers? This is Obama! Get down! It's a Wishful Life is the fifth episode of season five. In this episode, Timmy tries to do many good deeds for people, but nobody appreciates it. Happy birthday, AJ! This computer, it's amazing, astounding, state of the art, obsolete as of four seconds ago. Thanks for the high tech doorstop. That doesn't work. Angry that his good deeds became unnoticed, Timmy wishes that he was never born, but afterwards he finds out that everybody would love their life without him. Without you mucking up his childhood, Crocker became Harvard's most valuable professor. And without you dragging AJ down, he was able to graduate high school at the age of five. With a full head of hair? Aw, oh, come on, how is that my fault? This was one of the most hated episodes of the series, since this episode implies that everyone lives a miserable life due to Timmy being born. As a result for the negative feedback revolving this episode, Bud Charman and the Knit staff apologized for this episode, and the episode barely aired on Nick again. Throughout the series, the Fairly Odd Parent franchise was given a couple of video games like Enter the Cliff for the Game Boy Advance, Breaking the Rules for the PS2, Game Boy Advance, GameCube, and Xbox, Shadow Showdown for the same platforms, and The Clash with the Anti World for the Game Boy Advance.
Paramount announced that the Fairly Odd Parents will begin a live action reboot. This time, the series will focus on Timmy Turner's 13 year old cousin, Viv, who inherit Cosmo and Wanda. The series is set to launch on Paramount Plus on March 31st in 2022. Mr. Crocker is a recurring villain in the series. Crocker is a mentally unstable teacher of Timmy Turner, and unlike most adults in the series, Crocker is one of the few people who believes in fairies. In the episode The Secret Origins of Denzel Crocker, it's revealed that Cosmo and Wanda used to be Crocker's fairy godparents, but for some reason Cosmo and Wanda had forgotten. Later on, it was discovered that Timmy and Cosmo were the reasons why he lost his fairy godparents, and the reason for Cosmo and Wanda not remembering is because they had their memory erased. Hey, what's this thing? According to Butch Hartman, Timmy's hat was originally going to be blue, but his blue marker went dry, so he used the pink marker instead. Over the years, the Fairly Odd Parents produced a few straight to TV movies. The first one was in 2011 called Grow Up Timmy Turner, and then there was The Fairly Odd Christmas in A Fairly Odd Summer in 2015. The TV movie starred Danielle Monet as Tootie and Drake Bell as Timmy Turner. Speaking of Drake, I know that Josh is in a new iCarly reboot. Let's see what Drake has been up to lately. Oh, fuck. Philip is a nickel that first appeared in the episode Spaced Out. Cosmo has a strong yet strange attachment to this nickel. Cosmo sleeps with Philip and sometimes brings it with him when he's afraid. Coins don't have gender, but Cosmo decided to make it a girl nickel anyway. Butch Hartman even stated that he ships Cosmo and Philip together. The good news is I've named my nickel Philip. What's the bad news? It's a girl nickel. Channel Chasers is the 24th episode of season 4. In this episode, Timmy keeps ruining things for his parents at their job by imitating things he's seen on TV. Finally, I'm a shoe in to win cleanest office! The one trophy I'll have that my arch enemy Dinkelberg won't! <laughs> Congratulations, Turner, you win the cleanest of Good heavens! Dinkelberg, quick, take this! And the race that goes with it! Neat! As punishment, his parents forbids him from watching TV, but Timmy wishes for a magic remote controller in order to enter the television. Unfortunately, his parents take the remote control and gives it to Vicky. What are you going to do next? Dictator week. I'll tell you what I'm going to do next. Get to the biographical channel and change history so that I can take over the world! <laughs> Vicky wants to use the controller to gain money and power. It's revealed that she succeeded and rules over Demsdale in the future. It was assumed that Channel Chasers was supposed to be the true ending of Fairly Odd Parents, but actually the real ending of the series was supposed to be Jimmy Timmy Power Hour 3, The Jerkinator. This movie was meant to serve as a series finale for both Jimmy Neutron and Fairly Odd Parents, but Jimmy Timmy Power Hour 3 was really poorly received. It didn't really wrap up anything, so instead they made more episodes of Fairly Odd Parents until the series got cancelled. Crash Nebula is the 21st episode of season 5. The episode premiered on July 2nd in 2004. The episode can best be described as a cartoon within the Fairly Odd Parents universe. Sometimes in the series, Crash Nebula is also depicted as a comic book. Butch Hartman pitched the idea as a Crash Nebula series in 2004. A pilot episode for season 5 where Timmy watches the cartoon on TV was created. The story shows how Spread Spivak joined the Space Academy and found his spacesuit. Nick decided not to make the pilot into a series due to bad focus testing. He loved the image of Crash Nebula so much we decided to make an entire spin-off pilot of Crash Nebula which was going to be a series on Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon looked at the pilot for Crash Nebula. They really loved loved it, but just like Hollywood studios do sometimes, they didn't love it enough. They didn't want to make it into a series, so we took that pilot episode of Crash Nebula and actually put it on an episode of The Fairly Odd Parents, and we just put a little bit at the front where Timmy turns on the TV. Oh boy, my favorite show's on. He goes to watch Crash Nebula, and then we wrap it up with Timmy and the fairies at the end. The Crash Nebula pilot that was supposed to be a series was actually just an episode of The Fairly Odd Parents in the end.
Kiss is a hard rock band consisting of Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Tommy Thayer, and Eric Singer. They had became one of the most well-known rock groups in the world since their premiere in 1973. Kiss appeared as special guest characters in a TV special, Wishology. They played the roles of the Galactic Guardians or the White Wine, who protected the White Wine for centuries. I thought you were Kiss! That's our day job. We protected the White Wine for centuries. Centuries? Wow, you guys are older than you look! Why do you think we wear the makeup? Kiss are fairy warriors, but they prefer the term magical order of rocking fairies. You guys are actually fairy warriors? Oh, we prefer the term magical order of rocking fairies! <laughs> Mary Kay Bergman is an American voice actor known for voicing characters like Dr. Blight from Captain Planet, characters from South Park like Cartman's mom, and Wendy Testaberger. Mary Kay Bergman originally voiced Timmy Turner in the Oya cartoon shorts. She was later replaced by Tara Strong after she took her own life. According to Butch Hartman on his Peach Bubble podcast, Fairly Odd Parents was supposed to have a feature film by Paramount. The movie was never produced. The movie would have been in 2D, and we also would have seen the origins of Fairy World. Also, in this movie, Cosmo would have had a baby, but this idea will later be used for later seasons. I remember you saying a while back that there was a, and I remember reading it online, like in your Butch Hartman forums a while back, that mm -hmm. there was going to be a Fairly Odd Parents feature film like produced by Paramount. There was many years ago when Fairly Odd Parents first took off, like in the early 2000s. Uh, mm -hmm. There definitely was talk about a Paramount movie. So how many coming. years after it started? Like it was like. Well, we actually wrote two scripts for it, and oh, wow. uh, it just—it's one of those Hollywood stories that just never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we really wanted it to. For some reason, it didn't go. Um, and you know, these things you can't explain. Mm -hmm. Movies are weird. Uh, movies take a long time to get made. Um, I don't know why it didn't go. It's why I really have no explanation. It was one of those things where, well, we just we're gonna wait on it. And when you hear that, you start they 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 move on. I guess sometimes mm -hmm. things take a long time to get developed. You know, things can get developed into the ground, meaning that you work on it and you you know people come in, they want their 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 input on the story, so you add their elements to it, and before you know it, the original story you wanted to write mm -hmm. is completely gone. Wow. And then they're like, well, we're not really feeling this anymore. But in that case, fairly odd parents didn't really happen. I think the lady who was behind it at Paramount at the time left Paramount and so hmm. usually when someone like that leaves all their projects go with them meaning go away because <laughs> the new person coming in wants nothing to do with the old person stuff they don't want to be like the old person has a project that's bad they don't want to be tarnished by mm -hmm. it so it's just sometimes the way things happen and you know no no hard feelings or anything it's just one of those yeah. things where it didn't happen do you remember any of the details from the script or the two scripts that you wrote um i know that in the first script cosmo wanda had a baby Oh, and yeah. that was before Fairly Odd that Baby. That was way before wow. Baby Poof showed up. And Wait. that's why when um, Fairly Odd Parents got renewed again, like in 2008 or something, mm. I said, I, what, what I want to do is do a baby episode. I want them to have a baby. because cool. I, I, I wanted to lift that element from the movie and put it in the show. Was it Poof in the movie? or was it Well, just... the baby's name was Dusty. It oh, was okay. uh, Fairy Dust. It was his name oh, was Fairy nice. Dust. They called him Dusty. Mm. And uh, so we changed Dusty to Poof. Did he go, it. Dust, Dust? No, <laughs> no. Yes, exactly. That would have been hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Mother! Yeah, it would have been funny. <laughs> but uh, no, he didn't. Uh, uh, but he, uh, we ended up making Poof um, just come about just because we wanted to put the baby in. And, then, mm. and that was our highest rated Fairly Odd Parents yeah. episode ever. Mm. That was my favorite. Really? Yeah. When that Poof and Jimmy Timmy Power Hour. Oh, Those yeah. Those were my two favorites. Yeah, there you yeah. go. How about um, in the movie, would it been, have been like live action or would it have been CGI mm -hmm. or would it have been 2D animation? I think the movie would have been 2D all the way. Yeah. But uh, we would have had some maybe CGI elements in there possibly. Yeah, cool. But uh, yeah, it would have been... God, it was so long ago, and it was a huge movie too. It was like. Do you remember was, the plot at all, or what happened? I know. I, I remember it basically. I actually have a leather-bound copy. Fred Seibert made me a leather-bound copy of the script, cool. so I have it somewhere. But um, actually, I'm sitting on it. Shoot, it's right here. <laughs> no, but um, um, using uh, it as a, like a coffee a, co a coffee coaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, I remember in the movie, Jorgen actually creates Fairy World. I think the fairies are in danger because they're on Earth. Mm. And then somehow... So it's like an origin of the It's almost like an origin of Fairy World, That's I think. Cool. And then Jor I remember there's a scene where Jorgen's like lifting Fairy World into the sky. We had this huge moment. Yeah. So I I, I got to get that script out. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we could like, you know, have a campfire with it or something. I don't know. Yeah. What, uh, but no, it was pretty cool. And uh, that, but anyway, Poof came out of that story. Very cool. Yeah. See? Yeah. In the beginning of the Fairly Odd Christmas, Timmy is traveling the world with Tootie and his fairies, granting wishes for all unfortunate people as part of the wishful thinking business they started. In the next scene, we see the group flying to Japan. This is where we see Kiryu and Haruka from the video game Yakuza.
Oh boy, Butch Hartman. I'm sure nobody has ever talked about all the dumb shit he's ever done. To be honest, I never really kept up with any of the Butch Hartman drama because personally I don't really find Butch Hartman interesting and I also don't have a hate boner for him. So I'm going to list off the controversies as unbiased as I can be. Okay, first controversy, it's a joke he made towards Tara Strong. But Tara was not the original Timmy Turner. The original actress was Mary Kay Bergman, who sadly passed away. But She, she was, was such a sweet, sweet lady. Sweet lady. Mm -hmm. She also did a bunch of voices on South Park when uh -huh. that first started. Yeah. She was the mom on South Park. No, she had a very prolific career. She was awesome. Doing great. And then she ended up passing away. And uh, I think Tara actually had something to do with that. And so that's <laughs> probably what, that was probably your fault. Uh -huh. No, I'm kidding. That was probably your fault. That was probably your fault. Uh -huh. no. It's probably just me because I grew up watching like South Park and like Family Guy and other shows like that. But it just sounds like an awkward joke that didn't land well. I saw a lot of people saying that this was so insensitive and how bad they felt for Tara. But they're forgetting that we're outsiders and that we don't know Butch and Tara's relationship or how they banter with each other when the cameras aren't rolling and plus the clip that keeps going around is the edited version I just shown to make things appear way more dramatic than it looks. Now since I showed you the edited version, let's look at the non-edited version. But Tara was not the original Timmy Turner. The original actress was Mary Kay Bergman, who sadly passed away. But She, she was, was such a sweet, sweet lady. Sweet lady. Mm -hmm. She also did a bunch of voices on South Park when uh -huh. that first started. Yeah. She was the mom on South Park. No, she had a very prolific career. She was awesome. Doing great. And then she ended up passing away. And uh, I think Tara actually had something to do with that. And so <laughs> that's probably what that was probably your fault. Uh -huh. No, I'm kidding. But uh -huh. um, Tara, uh, uh, was repl you replaced Mary Kay. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is history. And you've yep. done a fantastic job as Timmy Thanks. Turner. Thank you. Thanks. And I have, I, I'm going to have you do some things as Timmy Turner later on. Uh -oh. I know people want to hear your voices, right? Oh, okay, okay. Right? Good. For the for the fans. For the fans. Not for you later. Not for me. No, oh, no. Okay, okay. There might be, uh, maybe later. We'll <laughs> talk about that when we're not recording anything. <laughs> I'm going to assume people who made videos on this topic use the edited version of the clip because Butch Hartman cut out the joke in the original video even though it literally took me two minutes to find the original video using the Wayback Machine. I will say this though Butch, you are a pussy for cutting out the joke in the original video. It was already public. There was no point you trying to cover it up. The internet never forgets. You should have just kept it so people could have seen the full context instead of this clip that someone edited to make it seem more dramatic. Also this podcast was just so insufferable to listen to. It's just two people stroking their own egos and having to keep reminding each other how young they look oh we look we have worked together for so long on so many things but we still look so young we look amazing you guys should see us we look incredible really we really young. do i know so young so young we like should, way young man like I, where's our parents that's a very we good should question. have supervision my, my dad's only 30 we're old but we look fantastic right well we look, i'm much 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 younger than yes you, it's true you are but, you are um, yeah i'm like 112 at least it's really weird and exactly I'm 20 something <laughs> oh my god who the hell Cash. Guys, did you know that Tara Strong is vegan? Because it's really fucking important that you know that she's fucking vegan. You're like a vegan though, aren't I you? I am a vegan. Big time vegan. And you know what? That's this where the young thing comes in. Right? This Thanksgiving, we had some really good vegan pumpkin pie from Whole Foods. That's not, you know what? Just when you said that, don't ever say vegan pumpkin pie around me again. Listen. What have I ever done to you? you? Why would you say let that to me? Let me tell you something. We served it. Vegan well, pumpkin people pie? People couldn't tell. They couldn't tell? No. Okay, what's the point of even making if you can't tell? Because what's it's the, delicious. I, what, I don't understand it's the whole still vegan delicious, thing. but it's cruelty free. <laughs> Someday, but not today. In 2018, Butch Hartman announced a Kickstarter for a kid friendly entertainment streaming service called Oasis Entertainment. He presented Oasis as a network meant to reconnect families and bring them together with high quality entertainment for the entire family. The Kickstarter was fully funded on July 18 in 2018 with a total of $268,134. Soon after, a video emerges of Butch preaching to a church that he reveals that Oasis is meant to be specifically a Christian oriented streaming service. The Kickstarter backers had no clue about this because Butch Hartman never disclosed any of this in the initial release of the Kickstarter. The backers were not happy and rightfully so because you know when you present something a certain way and it turns out not to actually be a certain way and you take money for someone that's what we like to call a fucking scam a lot of people were upset and left negative comments on the campaign that butch hartman or someone else apparently deleted the next controversy is the art commission and yeah i get it i get it a lot of people are saying that 200 dollars is a lot for a commission but you got to understand you're paying more for the name recognition than the artist
art itself. Yeah, I know it's kind of lame, but some people just want to say, hey, look at this. This was created by the guy who made Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom. I mean, he's still fucking Butch Hartman. Someone would like to get commission from him. My problem is that when he's doing commissions, he traces for his commission art. It's one thing to look up a character for reference when you're doing a commission. It's another thing when you downright just fucking trace over the commission, especially when it's artwork from another artist. Don't be fucking lazy, Butch. You chose to do commissions. At least put some effort into it. It's already bad enough that you forgot how to draw your own art style, which is a little embarrassing embarrassing but at least you made some of your customers happy especially when you drew the popular fortnite character shade man <laughs> what the fuck there are a lot more things that butch hartman has done but i don't want to make this a butch hartman video so i'll link a troll video in the description if you're interested Nirvana is a Canadian entertainment company known for their work in children's animation. In 2001, Nirvana partnered with Nickelodeon to license the international release of the first five seasons of The Fairly Odd Parents. The reason why Timmy Turner wasn't in Nick All Star Brawl is because they didn't own all the rights. Even though Fairly Odd Parents is produced by Nickelodeon, the network only has the rights for the series in the US. The developers of Nickelodeon All Star Brawl said they couldn't clear all the rights for all the properties they wanted to use in the game. Even though Nirvana signed the deal 20 years ago, they still hold all the rights to the first five seasons of Fairly Odd Parents outside the US, which makes it a bit tricky for the game to add Fairly Odd Parent characters when it was released globally 